Hello, welcome back to Call Clutter Fairy, where I help you get clutter free so that you can live stress free. A couple months ago, I did a video on a creative way to use one of the stainless steel shelves that I love so much. And many of you responded with asking for a tutorial on how to assemble those. So that's what we're going to cover today. Today I will be unboxing the Whitmore Supreme five tier shelf. Now you can get these in a couple of different widths, heights, and you can choose between four or five shelves. Today I went with the five shelves. And I'm just gonna be showing you some of the things that you get as you unbox it. So each one of the four sets of legs come disconnected. You will have to screw those together to make the long legs but these little black hat looking pieces are just there for the transportation portion and you can throw those away it's to keep it nice and quiet and secure as it's shipping so remove all of the patch packaging from the legs get all the shelves separated and then once you get everything out of the box and unpackaged what I usually do just to keep a clean area is I throw the box and the packaging away because it is pretty bulky and and just absolutely gets in the way so once I have everything out and my space is clean and ready to go I'm going to pull out and here I'm showing the top which goes up and the bottom the bottom piece has threaded pieces where you can put in adjustable feet or in this case you can use casters. Usually the casters are extra, but this particular client is going to be putting a storage unit on a back porch. We don't want it to be unsafe, so we're putting it on casters so if there's ever an emergency, they can still get out safely. The casters are super easy to install. You absolutely just thread them in. You don't even need a tool. Um, so once you get those on, there's four of them for each feet, two, have locking mechanisms on them and two are just swivel wheels. So this is so that you can lock two in place and it will not move and be completely secure, but then you can unlock them very easily and much like a cart or a stroller, you can pull it out and slide it wherever it needs to go. Now they do have a little tool if you have difficulty tightening them where you can put that in and make it very, very secure. But here I'm showing where the locking mechanism is and the other one is just a free floating, a uh, free spinning caster. So now that I've got those in, the very first thing that I'm going to do is measure where I want my first shelving support. Now the supports come four to a little bag, so I'm gonna open the bag and I'm gonna show you how these work. So these are plastic, it'll show you which is the top, and which is the bottom, and they fit together. And the top portion, because they're graduated, is super skinny. The bottom is thicker, so once you snap this onto the pole, there's a little line that will actually grab the groove of these, and when you snap it on, they will not close all the way. That's something people don't understand, is they don't close all the way, but the weight of the shelf presses down on this graduated holder, and they will not slide out of place. So I'm lining it up to where I want, and by knowing which boxes you're going to be using, you'll really maximize the space on these storage units. So I'm planning the first level right now. I'm getting them all, making sure they are the same height, and then I can go ahead and put on my first shelf. Now that I have all four legs in, I'm going to be making the locking mechanisms at one end, so either the right side or the left side. And this is, again, think of the way a stroller works or a wheelchair works. You want the locking ones in either the front or the back. So now that I've got the four in, I stand it up and these two slid out a little, but just put a little bit of pressure on it. And again, because those supports are graduated, pushing down on it is what locks them on the space. And now I can start planning for my second shelf. These are the bins that I'm planning on using, so this is my guideline for each one. I will usually do the first two shelves before I screw in the extending rod for the height. So I'm going to go ahead and put on my support pieces again on all four sides. And this looks slopey because of the way my camera was, but I promise these are all level. 
So now that I have my pieces in place, I'll grab the next shelf. And one side has a lip on it. That is not the side to use. Make sure that the lip is facing down. And as you can see, I knocked up a little support piece. I just snap it right back on and I gently press them into place. And now I can go ahead and connect them. So the connector is threaded the opposite way, which is what I'm trying to show you right now. So as you're threading it in, one will be going to the right and the other will be going to the left. So as you connect them, it will actually tighten against that bottom rod and become super, super strong. So I'm gonna do all four here. And you can see I'm doing this by myself. I don't have any tools. It really is simple to do. That's why I love these so much. And you can see the notches on those rods are in one inch increments. So you can really customize this to whatever you want. So I have big bins on the bottom. I have little bins towards the top because as my client is reaching overhead, I don't want them having big heavy things. And I actually had the bottom shelf purposely raised up so they can have their pet area underneath the shelf. So we're really maximizing the space here. So I'm getting that last support on. I'm going to put in my third shelf and then this will be ready. So here's what it looks like when it is all done. I'm really happy with this. Again, you guys, it's one of my favorite pieces. So let me know what you think. If you've used one of these shelves, leave me a comment below on how you've used it or if this helps you to get them assembled. I really think they are one of the best storage solutions out there just due to the cost and the extreme versatility of these. If you haven't already, please remember to subscribe. Also, click that notification bell and YouTube has made a couple of changes. So you might check it again uh, because sometimes they switch it to where it's a personalized setting. And I don't know about you, but I haven't figured out where that personalized setting is, which means you won't be getting notifications when your favorite YouTuber posts. So make sure you check that and select all. That way you'll always be notified anytime one of your YouTubers puts something new up. Thank you so much for liking this video, leaving me a comment, and for coming back as a subscriber. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.